Hey -o, I'm Brian, and I was recently inspired by a YouTuber by the name of Neil over at Real Terrain Hobbies to get into terrain making and painting. Now Neil uh, typically uses traditional materials such as balsa wood, foam, cardboard, stuff like that to handcraft all of his terrain pieces. Well, I don't really have the space for that and the tools or the skills, but I do have a small 3D printer. So I figured, why not put my modeling skills to the test and see if I could make some interesting terrain pieces and maybe take you guys along for the ride. Now, it's been a long time since I've really painted miniatures, so I actually made up the first terrain piece uh, beforehand just to make sure it was actually half decent. Uh, so I decided though, since my printer is quite small and my space is fairly small of where I have to actually play and use these things, to work at a 15 millimeter scale instead of the traditional 28 millimeter. Uh, for reference, this is one of the models I've made in the past that's 28 millimeters, and this is the same model, if I get it up, printed in 15. So 15 mil scale is really tiny. But the model I want to make today uh, is based on one of the videos Neil did uh, of a little wall and daub shop and house, a two-story thing. So as I said, I've already actually made one, uh, so this is it. I won't show you too much because I want to sort of leave that for the end, but it's a modular little house that's got a full interior, in that scale. So I'm going to make another one that's the mirror of that and show you guys uh, some of the process. So I won't be showing you the 3D modeling since I've already done that, but I'll show you the model and uh, a bit of the printing and then mostly focus more on the painting of it. So as I mentioned, this is something that I had modeled previously. Now the way I made the model is uh, I made these wood beams, a single wood beam that I then copied and pasted, rotated, scaled, and then I've got the walls are a single object. The stones as well, they're multiple separate objects. I made about four or five different stones and then just stacked them up to create the chimney. Uh, and then the floorboards, at least in the top floor, are again, those wooden beams just made flatter. So each of the model files was exported as an STL, imported into Chaiti Box, and then sliced. Uh, so for this one, I did the roof and a bunch of the furniture. And then I also did a sliced file for the ground floor, uh, the stairs on the side of the ground floor, and a bunch of furniture around it, um, and then the second floor. And here we are printing away. So this is my Elegu Mars. It's a fairly small printer, but it does the job pretty well, um, and is, again, the main reason why I'm doing this in the 15 millimeter scale. So this is actually uh, the an earlier file that I'd finished up, but once it was done printing, uh, pop it off, clean, give it a little clean with isopropanol. Uh, we use a palette knife to get it off of the build plate, and into the isopropanol bath. So that's just some old used isopropanol I used for the first clean. Uh, and then I've got clean isopropanol I use do a second clean with after this. And then once it's done uh, cleaning in isopropanol and has been dried off, I pop it into my homemade UV light box, uh, on top of which you can see the twin of this house, the one I'd done previously. So anyway, it goes into the UV light box uh, and I expose it for the final cure for a couple minutes, uh, open it up, flip it over and expose it again. And that gets you to the final hardness and fully cured model. So here we have all the 3D printed pieces. It took four separate prints and about 12 hours to do. Uh, here we have the ground floor. Uh, it was printed in two parts with the staircase and cellar separate. That's mostly because my printer is uh, quite small and this model was too wide, so I did have to cut it down. But it will also let me paint the inside of the cellar much more easily than if this was one single piece. And then we have the second floor and landing. Again, that uh, the landing was cut off because the model was too wide. And I also had to fill in the bottom with a little bit of clay. I accidentally screwed up slicing the model and the cor this front face didn't fully attach to the build plate, so it curled a little. So instead of wasting a three hour print and another five dollars of resin, I figured just use a little clay to uh, finish that off. And then the roof, uh, which printed perfectly. As well, we have a little bowl full of all the furniture. So we've got like a little counter for the shop. We have the bed. We have some weapon racks. So we got all this little furniture in here to paint up. And I'll be doing that after the main house. So the first step is going to be to prime the surface, and I'm just using some uh, Vallejo paint-on surface primer. Um, and I did get myself a wet palette. I found uh, when I first was painting my previous model, all of my paints were drying super fast. So I picked up a reasonably priced wet palette that really helps uh, make your paint last quite a bit longer. So we're just going to brush that onto all the pieces. Now, probably the main reason I'm using brush-on primer uh, instead of using a spray-on is, again, I don't have a proper workshop. I'm in a small apartment, 
So I figured a brush on would be a little safer. I uh, wouldn't have to worry too much about respiratory protection or the air quality in here. Trying to get my little tiny windows open enough to get the air flowing for spray on. So at this point we have on two coats of primer and now you can really start to see the detail in the model coming out. So we've got some nice wood grain in the floorboards. Uh, that should be come out really nicely once we do the final paint. Uh, the stonework. And again here on the lower levels we have stonework into uh, the lower level of the first floor um, and then the daub on top which we're going to paint first. Now I don't want to paint it in pure white as I mentioned. Uh, I want to give this an older more rustic look. So I'm just going to mix a little bit of yellow in in order to get it to a more cream color uh, which will help the model look a little bit older, a little bit uh, more lived in. So painting the daub, I'm being pretty sloppy with it, I'll admit, since it is the base layer uh, and I will be painting around it in the wooden boards and the floor beams and that. I can be a bit sloppy with this part since I'll be covering up any uh, places where I accidentally paint over the sections. But yeah, I painted the inside and outside again with the same cream color. And then once I was done painting the daub, I dry brushed everything with that same cream color, uh, but I forgot to film that. But here are the parts. You can see it looks pretty sloppy and ugly at this point, but we'll be cleaning that up. So the next step is to paint all the stone. I'm using the trick from Neil from Real Terrain Hobby where he uses uh, blue and brown to add highlights to all the stone first before then painting the stone gray on top. And although the highlights don't show up too much in the final product, uh, it does make a little bit of a difference to give a bit more depth and texture to the stone. So I'm just going over all the stone parts. Uh, apologies for any bad camera angles. This is my first time filming uh, myself painting and I wasn't exactly sure what was on and off camera. I don't have a monitor to be able to see what's on the screen. But I went away with uh, getting everything coated in uh, small spots of the blue and brown. Again, just kind of being random with it so that uh, it's not just over everything, but just acts to add some variance to the different stones. So once I was done with the highlights, uh, I took some gray and I thought it was a bit too light. So I mixed in a bit of black just to darken it. And I went over all of the stonework. Uh, in this case, I did a fairly light coat so that those blue and brown highlights would still show up a little bit and I made sure to coat all of the stones. Now I left the mortar dark, I decided not to lighten it as I like the look of uh, dark shadowy mortar between the stones. Now, once I was done the stonework, I then moved on to the floors, painting them with a uh, lighter brown. Now in this case, I forgot to film the start of painting of the floors, but it's a fairly simple technique of just covering it in paint. And then once I was done the floors, I mixed up a bit of a darker uh, and more red brown by adding black and red into the leather brown in order to paint all of the wooden beams around the Waddle and Daub house. So this is the part that took the longest. Uh, you have to get into the front of the beam and then I turned the model into different angles to paint the slight side of each beam. Uh, I also painted the roof tiles at this point as I had forgotten to do that earlier. I started with an orange highlight and then used a lighter brown uh, to get the roof tiles a slightly lighter and more red color than the wooden beams and helped to differentiate them as a different type of wood. And then once I was done painting that, I went back to all the wood beams all over this model, which again took a couple hours of painting as I tried to make sure I got all of the sides of each beam. And I didn't want to get too much onto the daub section where I'd then have to repaint the cream color. Though I did make a few mistakes here and there and eventually had to make some more cream color and clean up my mistakes. So here I am just making up more cream color to go around the model and fix any mistakes where I went over the wood, uh, accidentally put the side of the uh, brown onto the daub itself. And then of course I would periodically accidentally paint the wooden beams white again and I would have to go and clean those up with some more brown paint. Uh, so it's kind of a back and forth chasing battle to try and get the lines nice and clean. And it wasn't perfect in the end, but I got it to a point I was happy with and I didn't feel like spending more hours working on this. So here we have it all painted up. Uh, now at this point though, you can see it looks kind of flat and a little boring. So I'm going to be working on that next. Uh, the first step will be to dry brush the whole model in that cream white. So unfortunately, uh, I was kind of off camera while I was doing this. I didn't realize how far off the camera frame all of the models were, but you can see the white is now adding quite a lot of texture into the model by picking up those high points uh, and highlighting them. So here we have all the pieces with the dry brushed white on it. Uh, you can see it adds a lot of character to the build. And I tried to sort of put more white into heavy wear areas like the stairs and around the door frames. And then once that was done, 
uh, I moved on to a strong tone wash over the whole thing. Uh, this kind of adds into the shadow and adds a bit of dirt and grime look to the model and gives it a bit more depth. It takes away some of the brightness of the white, so it looks a bit more natural and not like it's everything's covered in dust. And there we have it. This is everything painted up. Everything's dried. Uh, I'm pretty happy with how it looks. Uh, I've got that rustic and dirt to it. So with the building done, it's time to move on to the furniture and the doors. So here they all are laid out. We've got some barrels, a counter, the door, some crates, a bed, tables, stools. Uh, the first step was the same as with the main building, is to just get everything coated in a black foundation. Uh, for the smaller pieces, I used tweezers to hold them while I painted them up. Uh, in order to keep my fingers from getting completely covered in foundation. Though, as you can see, I still got my fingers completely covered in foundation. Alright, so with all the furniture coated in black, I then moved on to painting uh, the wooden portions. Uh, I tried to make a slightly lighter brown than the main beams of the house, just to differentiate the furniture from the beams of the building. And just went around and coated everything wood in this brown. And pretty much every, all the furniture is wood, so this was used quite a lot. I was done painting the brown uh, sections of the wood, I then moved on to using uh, metallic paint to paint all of the metal bits. So this was the uh, door handles and hinges, uh, the rim or uh, supports on the barrels, uh, the edges of the chests, um, and the sword handles and axe blades of the weapons for sale. So you can see the silver bits as I'm finishing off, I'm just tossing each item I finished to the side there. And it really does help these pieces to stand out. With only two colors, they look a lot better and a lot more real than uh, they did before. So once the wood color and silver were both done, I then just had to do the rest of the colors. So this is a cream color for the pillows and sheets and the papers on top of the counter, and uh, red for the bedspread, as well as adding text onto the paper on the counter, just to give it a nice little flare. And then once I was done that, I went back over all the pieces and dry brushed them with white as I had done with the main house. And then followed that up with a strong wash to give it that final uh, bit of depth and darkness and grit to all the pieces. And here's all the furniture painted up. Um, all of this now has to be put into the house and we're just going to use uh, super glue in order to do that. So I'm just going to grab each piece, put some super glue onto it, and then press it down with a pair of tweezers into the house where I want that furniture to be. Uh, and this is just kind of done just wherever I think it looks good. The last step was to glue the doors on. And I did some of them a bit open and some closed just to give a little variety to the model. So after a few evenings of painting, I finally have my second little Waddle and Dob shopping house complete. Now, as you can see, compared to the original, it's a little more red in color. It is the downside of buying only a few colors of paint and then mixing everything. It's really hard to match, especially when you're doing it a few weeks later. But I really dig it. Uh, we could just pretend this one's a little newer. Um, and they each have a different layout on the inside. So different furniture, some different colors. So these could be really useful in game. And uh, if you made it this far into the video, I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you for watching. I plan on uploading more miniatures videos and tutorials in the future. Uh, if you enjoyed this, then please subscribe so you can check those out when I upload them.